probably the ref. Beat on my chest, might get a tag. What you expect? They know I'm a dog, I go at their neck. I go at their neck. The screen on a jack, I'm leaning them left. I'm mean with the left, but I'm snatching them right. About to take flight, yikes. 94 feet, you full blood press, don't impress. Move like a vet, I got them upset, yeah. Stress, three so wet. Make your head coach, switch up the defense and set. That's better than stretch. Stay your feel, get some rest. Falling since a little one from a pee wee, I've been in league. Been a walking bucket, high school highlights all on TV. From the Julie to a new league, you barely hooped in PE. Killer kind of skin it like a team at Oop the VC. Oh, they in beast mode. They in beast mode. Walking cheat code. This shit easy. This shit easy. Like a free throw. Like a free throw. They talk real hoop. They talk real hoop. 94 feet though. 94 feet though. They talk real hoop. They talk real hoop. 94 feet though. Four hats up there. Huh? What hats it was, it was, there? It was Memphis, Texas, Virginia, Colorado. Those are my four hats. Mm -hmm. So they up there. You know, the newspaper's there. It's this big deal. Um, so I'm like, all right, you know, next year I decided to, you know, and I do the little thing where I grab the wrong hat and I put it down. And I grabbed Texas and my mom and them start clapping. Put the hoe down too. And I'm like, damn, I put Texas down. I grabbed Memphis. And I say, I'm going to the University of Memphis. And I look and they like, shock. Motherfucker, <laughs> you feel Stop. me? Like, mama so, don't even know. The one, the one thing, the one thing that I can always say and throughout, like throughout my entire process, basketball wise, is that I did it my way. Mm -hmm. I made the decisions that I wanted to make, regardless of how anybody else felt about it. Mm -hmm. That's what I would. I can say that. Yeah. Like a lot of people can say, well, I, I went got here. Scared yeah, I, I, I went here to look after because I had to feed my family and I had to. I did it my way. So I wasn't even one of the decisions to go on a visit because my parents wouldn't let me go to the University yeah. of Miami. My parents like you can't go on this visit. That's well, you cool. know, for me, I, I during the vi the visit process, the one thing that kind of screwed me up was the University of Hawaii made it to where you, you get you get five you, visits, but you gotta commit no or sign. It's two visits, it's two visits. Yeah, so you only you only get five. Yeah. Hawaii counts. If you go visit Hawaii, it counts as two of your visits. So, but that thing about them having to sign or commit is not true. No. So what what ends up happening is what they what they caught on to was they getting hella five star recruits to come visit Hawaii, and they like we ain't signing none of these dudes. So the NCAA caught wind of it, and now they like all right, well, we it really ain't nothing we can do to say that you're not really interested in going to Hawaii, but we can make this shit two visits. So and so now people was like, well, shit, I ain't, I ain't wasting two visits on this motherfucker. Like, I want to go to Hawaii. Bad, but it ain't that bad. You need to see five so me and my mom, what me and my mom Georgia started five, doing was. Kentucky, Kansas, Duke, North Carolina, and Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. So what me and my mom started doing was we started going on vacations. So my mom was super duper into football. College football, NFL, she was like the guru when it came to football. Mm -hmm. And she always said she wanted Child to go to the game. We did, but not really. Okay. Like, I played high, all the way up to ninth grade high school, and that was it. Okay. The grass made me if, I'm not a fan. Okay. So we go, my mom's a super, Sounded like you over there. Super football <laughs> head. So, so at this point in time, Virginia Tech is like three in the country, and LSU is like two. I get it. And mm. so the game is at, no, no, this is at Death Valley. It's yeah. in LSU. Yeah. So, That's how I at the game. my no, mom, I was at the game. My yeah. mom is like, I want to go to that game. I'm like, well, shit, Let's go. we going to the game then. So, shit, I hit up Buddy from LSU like, yo, this one I want to take my official visit. And he like, all right, bet. So, we set it up. So, we go down to the game. You know, this is my, my mom's first time meeting Shaq. We walk in. Everything is cool. I'm going to tell you why I scratched LSU off my list. We're down and we're riding around. Now, mind you, it's a sea of purple. I get there two days before the game. It's a sea of purple. Everywhere, it's purple room. tents, it's bands, it's everything is purple. And so we're riding on a go-kart from the basketball gym to the football spot. And I had just got my first pair of white Air Force Ones. Very first pair ever in my oh, life. They brand the spanking new. And we riding on the go-kart. It had rained a couple days ago. So I'm riding on the back of the go-kart. In the swamp, for real. And I got to say his name, Butch Pierre, is driving the go-kart. He's an assistant at LSU. Mm -hmm. And he hits a mud puddle. And the mud goes all the way up the side of my whole fit. I could give a damn about my clothes. But them white ones. Them I looked down at them white, white ones, ones and them shits was toast. And I'm pissed. So now I'm, at this point in time, I'm ready to leave the visit. Like, I'm ready to go home. 
My very first hold pair. On, hold 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 on, everywhere. Hold on, 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 Absolutely. This is my mind you, mind you now, mind you, you gotta understand where I'm coming from. Growing up, when you had white ones, on. them shits was you know you walking you, look, you walking flat. You foot, feel me? You, right, you, you don't, don't like want to crease them. You got extra socks at the toe of your shit because you don't want them to crease them. You yeah, feel this? So, because this is my coming back out. This is my very first mid, pair. Mid, the mid top. The mid top. No, they was low. The low. Oh, ever. Man. This is my my. I, I'm gonna tell you how new they was. I hadn't even undone the factory style oh, laces you still at got the top. The they, they, like, you like, funny like, loop. Yeah, yes, the funny yeah, loop yeah, at the top yeah, of the yeah, shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just I took the shoe cover out and just put my foot put in. in. I ain't changed nothing about the laces or nothing. So that so buddy oh. hit, buddy hits the mud pile. Boom, and I look down, and I'm like, God damn. First thing he says, man, don't worry about that. We'll get you 20,000 more pair. And I'm like, uh-uh. not today. Y'all. This is my first pair. <laughs> I want these to be new. I can't even go to the game with these on now. So, you know, I enjoy it. wipe them down. I right? enjoy the rest of my visit at no, LSU. No, that was my last contact with LSU because of that. So, you know, I told you about Virginia Tech, told you about Georgia, told you about Georgia Tech. I wrote them off automatically because of how they did him. So my visit to Colorado comes around. Now, when I go to Colorado, this is um, Corey Higgins mm-hmm. is at Colorado. Corey Higgins is hosting me on my visit. My mom always wanted to go to Colorado. Wow. So we up in the mountains of Colorado, we going skiing and all this old type of weird shit, you know, because this is what my mom wants to do. So I'm like, all right, cool. I take my visit to Virginia. Now, I'm seriously considering Virginia. Mike Scott's up there. Mustafa Farrakhan is up there. Like, you know, the, the, the school is, is dope. They're showing me, you know, Ralph Sampson, you know, they, they selling me on that because, you know, I played with his son. And, you know, it's just a vibe at Virginia. I love Dave Later, but their team was just so bad. I can't do Virginia. Can't take a chance. So when I go to Texas, my visit to Texas was dope. Like, the campus, campus atmosphere, like, everything about Texas is fire. Everything's good. How much you were cool was illegal? Cause uh, to the Hawaii. I ain't go to Hawaii. Oh, okay. I ain't go to Hawaii. I ain't go to Hawaii. That's what's up with Preston Brown. No, that's the only reason I didn't go to Hawaii. <laughs> because they said it was too busy. Is it two, three, four, five, so yeah, so you know, six. you know, I go through that whole recruiting process, and you know, it gets to the point. Like I said, we were just taking little mini vacays, you know, two three vacays, two three day vacays to I'm these different schools. But that, that's so important, but like. Y'all was just listening to that story, but had your mom or just had your, you know, yeah. your parents yeah, 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 and your yeah, yeah, big yeah, brother, sure. like your, your, your village that was around you while you doing all this, man. Like, yeah, the dopest part about it for me was is that my best friend in high school played quarterback. Okay. And he was he was really good. Now, mind you, the situation got kind of messed up because the coaching change at the end of the senior year, you know, the whole football is different than basketball. Yeah. You know, ain't no football AU tournament. So they what got you to, do on the field. Yeah, you have no right. Same chance. So his coaches weren't able to send his film off, whatever. That you know that situation went how it went. So when Rick Barnes comes, you know he's sitting in the meeting with me, and Rick Barnes is like, "Shit, I'm almost positive I can get your film, you know, to the to the football coaches." Shit, we like we going to Texas together, like shit is lit. So you know the football team ended up offering him a scholarship, and uh. We we actually never spoke about it until like two or three years ago, mm-hmm. but he was like, you know, he was pissed at me for a long time for not going to Texas. Cause y'all supposed to do it together, right? So cause they offered him a scholarship too, but when I didn't go, they pulled his. They were saying, oh, yeah, me and my uncle had a joint thing too. Yeah, so you know, it, it went, you know, but but like I say, the 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 whole process for me was, you know, it was just, it's almost something that you can't really explain going through. Like it's almost one of them things. Like you just kind of had to be there. Because everybody's recruiting story is completely different. Absolutely. You know, it's, 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 and it's the story in itself, it becomes dope as fuck because mm-hmm. you get to see like a different side of life for mm-hmm. that, for that moment, for those, the, those two, three days you're at, at whatever school you're at, you are the highlight of everything. Everything is, they you make know, you number one. Even you when you get to the airport, when you get to the airport, that was my first time, my first visit. That was my first time ever seeing my name on one of the signs oh, at the end of the, you know, you know that, I think that shit is dope. That shit is dope. You go you get your bags and it's the, by the limousine, but you got your name on the shit. 
Even in your yeah. professional, when you yeah. get up and play yeah. and you get a team, they're like, yeah, I'm here for Mr. Cameron Taylor. Yeah, like, yeah. And that's, yeah. that's me, bro. That's, bro. that's me. <laughs> My first time in a Ronald Reagan suite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. me, bro. Like, that's me. Getting it, So getting to live that part was dope. So, so you know, the, my so when does the, the bubble pop? The first time, second you say I do. The, <laughs> so, we'll, go ahead, go ahead. So, we have yeah, so, so the, the first time that went and disagreed with a decision I made was after my freshman year. So, you know, the whole recruiting process, I'm hearing buzz about Cal leaving Memphis. But I'm looking at Cal and he's telling me, I ain't, I'm staying here. Like, don't worry about it. It's just hoopla. Like, I'm staying right here at Memphis. So I'm like, all right, cool. And I'd be damned if I get a text message before we play Missouri in the NCAA tournament, Sweet 16 game my freshman year. And the text is like, Cal just took the Kentucky job. And I'm like, nigga, Cal's right here. here. Like, we about to play. What you talking about? And so it's the illest shit how it happened. So, you know, we play Missouri, lose to Missouri, get back home, and we're all sitting in the dorm room just like this. We're sitting in the dorm room watching ESPN and across the bottom of the ticket. Former Memphis coach, John Calipari, accepts job at Kentucky. And we're watching it together. And Tyreek didn't give a damn because he was leaving. Senior class didn't really give a damn because they was leaving. A lot of them other guys that was in the mix was just like, oh, well, like, who's next? But me, I'm like, I'm here. Yeah, because Cal also had the top recruiting class in the country. Come the next year. So a the lot of guys year. was like, thank DeMarcus God. DeMarcus Cousins and them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, DeMarcus Cousins, John Wall, Eric Blesso, all those guys were coming to Memphis. Yeah. 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 Xavier yeah. Henry, all those guys yeah. coming to Memphis. Now they take me to Kentucky. So, you know, when that happened, I get up and I go to the back. And before I can pull my phone out to call anybody, we get a team text message. Hey, meet me at my house ASAP. So the dopest thing about where he lived was we lived – Right here, we had a 10-man apartment and then a five-man unit right next to each other. So he lived right there. So we jumped the gate and just walked to his crib. And so we walk in the crib, and he's like, first thing he says is, you know, as a coach, we have dreams too. And, you know, when those dream jobs come calling, it's just some, some things you just can't pass up. And, you know, I'm like, I get it, but damn, bro, like. I just talked to you. Hey, yeah, man, like you could have told me that because I would have went somewhere else. You know, because I didn't come to Memphis for Memphis. Like, I came to play for you. I see what you got You told me. I you didn't need me. You like, feel me? You got me like, excited. I wanted, to, I wanted to be a part of that. And so, you know, when he left, we had a, ten, a family meeting about it. Like, in the family meeting, it's like, we're going to Kentucky. It ain't even nothing to talk about. And so, I'm like, all right, cool. Like, Kentucky it is. We out. And so we're in Memphis for like a month and a half with no coach. And I mean, like, ain't nobody checking on summer school classes. Like, I remember this because, you know, you guys are our rivals, Memphis and Tennessee. So yeah. we're like, oh, man, Memphis is done. We ain't even going to worry about them as our rivals no more. And man, we got to worry about now is because Kentucky's in the SEC. So <laughs> we got to worry shit. about Cal. We ain't worried about, worry about Cal. Memphis no more because. Memphis at that time was our, was wow. our Kentucky. No, yeah. no. They, yeah. was our, they was our yeah. Kentucky at that time. Like, they had all the recruits coming in, so mm-hmm. we always was looking forward to that. So now, like, okay, well, he gone. But, man, that nigga right here in my damn goddamn yeah, sense. So, I, know what, so that, 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 that month well. and a half period with no coach for us, that shit was like, we wasn't nobody there to work us out. Like You don't know who coming in. Yeah, either. it was like, so it was, fuck, I'm going to Kentucky, that's it. Like, I'm out. Mm-hmm. So they announced that Passner oh, is coming in. Pastner is the head coach now. So Pastner was at Memphis the year before. And so he's doing his press conference. He was the assistant. Right. Gotcha. So, you know, he's doing his press conference and he's talking, doing a thing. And, you know, he's talking about, you know, I know you guys are hearing about, you know, guys leaving and transferring and, you know, worried about recruiting classes. And I'm in the back of the meeting. And, you know, I play, I play all the time. So he's talking and I scream out, Coach, we ain't going nowhere. And literally, the, the press conference stopped. It's like, Every camera turned and found where I was at. The next morning, the shit was on billboards around the city of Memphis. We ain't going. We ain't going to what my face plastered on. And I'm like, the fuck, I can't leave you now. Like, I don't, you know, so in my mind, I'm thinking, fuck, I got to stay. So, six man a year in the conference as a freshman, true freshman. You know, I'm kind of like, they had, well, fuck, the end, they had him at the end of the lottery. That's yeah. the only reason I disagree with this. Uh, no, no, no. That was late first round. Late first round. Late first round. No, late that first was round. sophomore year. No, sophomore year I was lottery. End of the lottery. Yeah. So, 
So that happened. So freshman year, I'm like, well, fuck, I got one more year anyway, and I'm out. Like, it don't really matter where I go. And I didn't want to sit out. So I'm like, sophomore year comes around, fuck it, I'm playing great basketball, you know, sophomore year went good, second team, all region, all, all conference, like, you know, everything is good. And it comes down to, you know, decision time again. And, you know, shit, we have a meeting, family meeting, and, you know, because we're hearing shit. And the first thing I heard about the NBA was Indiana wanted to take me with their first pick. Mm -hmm. This is the 2010 draft. draft. 2010 draft, Indiana says, they reach out to people through people saying, shit, we're going to take them with with our first pick. And I'm like, man, fuck that shit, bro. I'm having way too much fun in college. I'm coming back to college. Fuck it. So who does Indiana take that year with their first pick? FPG, right? Paul FPG. George. So, in the one workout I went to, me and Paul George, my first time ever seeing Paul George. I never heard of Paul George before. Yeah, shout, right. shout out to Palmdale yeah. P. Yeah, oh, so, you know, man. shout out to oh, Pandemic P. Pa- Palmdale P. Yeah, shout out to Pandemic P, man. So, you know, that was that was the, the, my first hint of the NBA was they, Indiana says, shit, we going to take you with our first pick. But, you know, that was the only thing that I heard that was that high. Everything else was... End of the lottery, you know, mid first, late first. I'm like, I can get better than that. And so, you know, that was the second time Winton was like, you idiot. Like, you idiot. Because you're you know, better than lottery? What you yeah, the whole, your, your whole time, you seeing how coaches, you you can have one good year, yeah. they playing you. I'm, yeah. I'm going through it. I'm over in Germany. I'm, I'm hearing all this stuff. I'm going through it. I'm like, man, this guy is an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Go get the money. Because yeah. the money a lot harder to get over here. Yeah. So, you know, that happened. I come back junior year, and the beginning of my junior year was when I got to the highest I'd ever been on any mock draft. And I was seven. I got all the way Are up to y'all seven. beating Tennessee at this time, or Tennessee beating y'all? Mm. This was the, the junior year they smoked us, but okay. I got to get to why. Okay. So, um, I end up getting hurt. <laughs> huh, Cam? This is, this, is, okay. this is my junior year. I end up getting hurt. We played against a team named Lemoyne Owen in Memphis. Community mm-hmm. college, just a tune-up game. Mm-hmm. And so I get a steal. We're up by 56 points, 60 points. I get a steal, and I tear the rim off. And I'm swinging on that motherfucker. When I come down, I feel a little, you know, a love little hitch in my love shit. basketball. Nah, but it's not that bad. So, you know, I feel it, but I'm like, damn. Like, you know, I'm going to put some ice on my shit. I'll be cool. And so it progressively got worse. It got to the point where I wasn't practicing at all my junior year. I, I, go, I come to the gym, I put on the little, uh, the shit where it take the weight off your legs on the treadmill, and I do that for an hour, and then I ice, and then I go home. And game time, I'm playing every minute, every game. And, you know, so I'm seven on everybody's mock draft board. And it got to the point where I, like, I couldn't sleep at night. Like, I'm crying myself to sleep at night because my leg is hurting that bad. So they're like, you know, do you want to do surgery? I'm like, do I need the surgery? I'm like, no, nah, if you can deal with the pain. And I'm like, is there anything y'all can do for the pain? I'm a kid now, so they give me a cortisone shot. I get a cortisone shot December 7th before we play Kansas in the Jimmy V Classic. And the, just invite the, the check engine light out. Right. Mm-hmm. So at the garden, my mind is telling me, shit, Spoon, you back. Like, this let's go was, kill Kansas. This is what y'all was playing in the black. Y'all played in the black jerseys that game? Nah, nah, nah. We was blue. We played in the blue jerseys. But this was the Morris Twins, Thomas Robinson. Like, they was loaded. That Kansas team was nice. Did you have a good game that game? I had 10 at halftime and couldn't walk. Oh, yeah. What year was that? Before? Junior. This is my junior. Okay. So, I'm going to tell you how it goes. We played Kansas December 11th. I had, no, I, we played Kansas December 8th. I had surgery December 11th, three days after the game. We played number three Georgetown on the 28th. Because of the cortisone shot, in my mind, I'm you back. Play. That's why you ain't play the stadium. Right. I'm back. Like, I'm back. Nah, I'm back, bro. Like, I, in practice, I'm rocking that motherfucker. I'm windmilling, dunking shit. And after every practice, like, like I'm noticing that I can't, like, my leg just ain't, you know, it ain't really. You extend enough. Yeah, like, but it don't hurt at all. Like, I don't feel this shit at all. There's something wrong. We played Kansas December 8th, 17 days after my surgery. Major knee surgery, and I played in that game. I played nine minutes, had three points, and I knew I wasn't right because the first time I caught the ball off a down screen, I go to turn, and I take a dribble, 
and my leg like just fucking gives out. And I'm like, what the fuck? So you know, I shit, I bounced that shit off. Pain. I bounced it off my foot, and shit. I'm like, oh right, shit, I tried back down. And then that was the beginning of the end of my reign in Memphis because we played Georgetown, then we played SFA. Uh, Stephen F. Stephen Austin. F. Yeah, Stephen F. Austin in Texas. They come to us and I killed him. So I'm thinking, all right, I'm back now. And then we go to to Tennessee, and I have a bad showing, and they beat the shit out of us. And that was that was it. That was the last time my name was on any mock draft board. Mm. So the shift went from it being. Spoon's program, I'm going to tell you how cold it went. It was Spoon's program, and now I got a freshman in Will Martin who kind of just, you know, the ball fell he right saw, in his lap. He saw his own. And he and started to be perfectly killing. honest, I, swell, I, I really, really felt like that's exactly how it happened. Um, maybe because I wasn't really into the recruiting at that point in time, but I didn't really know much about Will when he came into Memphis. Mm-hmm. Not like that, and that's no disrespect because Will was a great player. But I just didn't know any much much about him. When he came in his freshman year, he was first of all he was really 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 small, mm-hmm. even compared to me. He I'm a skinny, skinny dude. He was skinny as hell. But he was small, so I was like, "There's no way that I'm like, damn, Memphis is going down." But they were like, "Nah, he really the guy." Now nah, really, we'll, can, we'll can he, play. He, and the really one thing, the, the one thing that Will was really good he, at, he was could play. He could play. play, huh? Will's always been a one-on-one basketball player. Yes. And that's yeah. how I always knew that his game yeah. would translate to the NBA. Because yeah. in the NBA, you but he wasn't, But he couldn't show that one-on-one Mm-mm. in college. Mm-mm. So in college, what I'm seeing is not what y'all are seeing in practice. And I'm just like, man, well, why they take the reins from West? Right. See, a part of that, was, West, right? and, See, a, a part of that was a part of that a was freshman. is because I had, and like, I... I don't want to say I trained them, but I had that freshman class. Mm-hmm. I had them ready to go. Oh, right. I had them ready to go. We was in the gym all the time. We're lifting all the Everything we did was together. Because my freshman year, that's what I was brought into under Cal. Every when we went to if we went to the club, we go to the club 18, 19 guys deep. Because everybody had to go. That's just how it went. Walk-ons, managers. If we went out, everybody had to go out. That's just what it was. So I had them on that same type of timing. Everything we did was together. So it wasn't ever, everybody in the media was trying to say like, well, how are they going to do this? And with that guy and this guy and that guy. And and we're, I got them thinking like, we doing this shit together. Like, it don't really matter about yeah, that. Already laid the foundation so what ended up happening when the, when the shift changed was, it became Will's program. And Will didn't approach it like I did. So that's when the tug of war became between him and Joe Jackson, him and Chris Crawford. Him and Tarz Black. Jalon Kendrick. Him and Jalon Kendrick. Kendrick. Like, all that, it, the, the tug of war happened because the the alpha was there no more. Mm-hmm. Like, Will's never, Will, what, Will didn't want to be a leader. Will's mind was shit. I'm one, one and done. I'm one and done. If no. not one, two tops and I'm out. He had, it, it wasn't a, like, my thing was shit, I'm still here. He had a brother that came in there too with him. Tony, yeah. Tony about transfer to Tennessee. Tony had game. Loved on game. But yeah, man, you know it was for me at, at, at Memphis. Memphis went how it went, like you know it, it. You know. So now you know you say Memphis went how it went, and you're still able to somehow, you know, get on the team. Um, you, you create, uh, not create, but you, you get on with uh, San Antonio. How, how did you get on with San Antonio? So I'm gonna tell you how it honestly went when I go. I get a phone call before the draft started because every pre-draft, I, I, I worked out for every team. Mm-hmm. I, I, they, they were saying it was ridiculous what I was doing because I have, I did circuits. I did a West Coast circuit and I went to Sacramento, Golden State, both LAs. Then I did a Texas circuit where I went Houston, Dallas, yeah, San Antonio. Antonio. And then I did an up north circuit where I went New York, Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Like I did, I did, I, and I was going crazy. I was getting last minute phone calls like, hey, this kid dropped, you want to come work out? That's like I, I literally had 27 pre jab workouts, and that's like unheard of. So I'm, I'm, and every workout I go to, I'm going to ones with guards, and I'm playing with the little guards. And then I go to one where it's Draymond and them, and then I go to one where it's tweeners like me. So it, I worked out with everybody, but every workout I killed. So now I get a call five minutes before the draft, and it's New York. New York's like, yo, we got 37. We're going to take you at 37. So I'm like, well, fuck it. I don't even want to watch the draft no more. Shit, I'm going 37. So, you know, 37 pick comes. I'm sitting right next to my mom on the couch. 37 pick, 
the New York Knicks select, and I grab my mom's leg like this, coast this pumpkin nigga loop. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, they just told me they was going to take me at 37. And my phone rang, and it's the Knicks. Hey, man, we decided to go another direction. We want you to play on our summer league team. And I'm like, I'm going to talk to my agent about it. And so my agent calls right after I get off the phone with them. Hey, you going to New York playing summer league? I'm like, all right, cool. So I go kill summer league. I go, yeah, yeah, I go kill summer league. So on my summer league team, I got James White. I got Chris Copeland. Like my original summer league roster was got traded to Houston for Marcus Kent. I had Jerome Jordan. I had Tony Douglas. Like all those guys were on my summer league roster. They got traded to Houston for Marcus Kent. So now they're scrambling. It's a fucking scramble to try to fill guys in the on the summer league roster. And so they end up getting Sylvan Landersburg to fly over. Mustafa Farrakhan ended up getting on the roster. And I'm, I am kill summer league. And so I'm like, the Knicks got to sign me now. Like I, I'm, I'm first and second in every category. It's me and Chris Cole, first and second in every category. Points, rebounds, assists, steals, everything. And, you know, it doesn't work out like that. So now, at this point in time, I'm just home. But I'm working out like crazy. So I'm working out like crazy. I'm doing two a days. I'm living with my older brother at the time. And I get a phone call right after we had a 6 a.m. workout. And it's my agent. My agent's like, I got it on speaker. I'm sitting in the car with Will. And agent's like, yo, we're going to San Antonio. And I was like, what's in San Antonio? <laughs> and he was like, Spurs, buddy. Like, we're going to San Antonio. And me and Will looked together. We both started ball and crying. And I'm like, this is what it this is what I did it for. This is what all the all the workouts, all the injuries, all the crying, all the blood, all the sweat. This is what I did it for. And the only thing that I, I regret happening at that point in time was me and him got into a fight. I don't want to, I ain't fucking with you no more. You were winning. Yeah, like one of them type of fights. And for me, I wanted I wanted him to be a part of that. As you shared with Will. Yeah, like, like I wanted him to, because that's what. You're closer to him. We, I mean, like, like we grew up. up. We, yeah. Like, we grew up whooping each other. Like, that's what, that's what, that's why we as tough as we are now, because it was always a competition. And one of us, reached, like, I, I got to the end game. It's the end game. Ain't nothing past the NBA. That's it. That's what you work out for. And I, I didn't I didn't get a chance to share that with him. And going back, that'd be the only thing I changed. Man, you know what's crazy, Spoon, is uh let me just say something. Uh for a couple of years, I, I it was kinda like uh I think you said something earlier where you had a problem. Oh, your your best friend TJ had a problem with you for something that you might not even know. Mm. I used to have a problem with you because we you we had the same agent at one point in time. Lance. And Lance told me the exact same thing about San Antonio. Mm. San Antonio was supposed to be something that I was doing. Mm. That I was going to be like, man, San Antonio will like you. We want to, you know what I'm saying, holler at you. you know, I, I'm, I'm, I got a good relationship with him. You know what I'm saying? I think we're going to make it happen. See, the craziest part about that is, Cam, is that the only reason that I got there was because Matt Bonner was Lance's guy. So mm. it was really, it was a favor to Space. Lance. So that's what Lance was like, you going to be good. Yeah. That's why he was like, you're going to be good to get in San Antonio. Yeah, like, yeah. I think you got a good shot. Don't worry about it. I'll call you with the details. Next thing I know, school is signed with the San Antonio Spurs. <laughs> My nigga, you know when I see this shit, I'm like, are you get serious, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's like, it's nothing. Like, I'm not, I'm not hating on you. I know you're a good player, but it's just, it's like, like you said, like when you broke down with your brother and like that, like that's the feeling that, that mm. I want. That's the feeling that I thought that I was at. Like I'm about to have this feeling, right? I've worked all of this. Mm. And I got arrested. I had all these things that happened to me in my career and shit like that. Coaching changes, all that. And I'm like, all of this is, like you said, this is what it's for. And then I had, I put it in the hands of somebody else mm. who told me that they was going to get it. But then you give it to right back to the person who was like really a homeboy. Like we wasn't kicking it like yeah, that. Yeah, We've yeah. been in the same circles and stuff like that, but you're a homeboy. You're from the crib. Yeah. So it's like, you happy, know. but it's like, I Dang. still wanted to be yeah, yourself not, too. Not, 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 not in my experience. Real fast. Not in my experience, Real fast. If y'all heard anything, they would tell you anything. Don't go with anything. Yeah. No, Don't go with okay. anything. So, you know, when, when, what ended up happening was is I get down there and I'm playing great basketball. You the great suit. So, we're yeah, in 2011 right now. It's 2011. 2012. 2012. So, so the okay. craziest part about it is my first day there. Like, my first day there. 
I walk into the locker room and I see my name on the on the name plate, and Tim's locker is right next to mine. Uh, and bro, I walk, I think I'm I, following you at this time. Bro, I see you I post walk, this shit on the on the I, Facebook. I I'm following you. I'm I like, walk into uh, the locker room and I see Tim in his locker, and Tim's like, "With a spoon, right?" And I'm like, "Oh shit!" Like Tim Duncan on me. Like what the fuck? Yeah, him, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Duncan, I'm, 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 I'm Western with Mister Duncan. Shit, I'm Western. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Not Tim, but Mister Duncan. Yeah, because you know I'm I, like I, in man. my mind right, I'm thinking right. like you my teammate, but shit, I was watching you when I was loving it. You feel me, like Mister Duncan or the Tim? Yeah, what do yeah, they call you out here? Can what I call you Timmy? Yeah. Like, what am I supposed to call you? So you know the crazy. But I got in trouble at one time because we had practice, and in practice, man, it was just destroying shit. Like he's going crazy and me watching it front and center was like, holy shit. So I get a tweet and I tweet, damn, man, it was killing the day in practice. And my agent called like, hey, take that shit down now. Like, delete it. And I'm like, damn, like, y'all act like I gave away the playbook or something. Like, I'm just saying, man, it was killing. Take that shit down. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, and that was the first time I got in trouble. Funny story I got for San Antonio. One day after practice, Timmy's in the back, you know, as men in the locker room. You know, it just is what it is. Ain't nobody, you know, ain't nobody peeping times, but, you know, it just is what it is. So Timmy's at his locker, just got out the shower, drops his towel. When he drops his towel, there's a, a tattoo, you know, on his back, on his lower back area. <laughs> so, you know, a guy, that's, a guy that's on a training camp contract sees the tattoo. For me. <laughs> That's what it was. Let this be a lesson, man. He sees the he sees the tattoo, and he erupts. He's going, "Oh shit! Oh, t- he got a lower back tattoo. Tim Duncan, gay. Tim Duncan, gay." And as, as soon as I'm about to laugh, I look over. Danny looks at me like, "Cause don't nobody else in the in the locker room crack a smile," and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna sit this one out." As funny as that shit was, I'm like, nah, hell no, nah, I'm gonna sit this one out. And so the next day, buddy, you walked empty. Buddy was gone. You never, empty. never heard from him again. NBA wise, that was it. Mm-hmm. That was the last time I heard from him. And I was like, damn, like, just, this shit wild. Yeah, <laughs> like, I want to end the joke for real. Like, this shit yeah, wild. Before this shit got, got started, for real, out here. This, this shit wild. wild. Before it got started, bro. Oh, Danny, because me and Danny were close, because we uh, worked out at the, so we got the same turn in New York. Uh, so what's his name? Jerry Powell. Yeah. Okay. So me and me and Je- me and Daddy used to be in the gym grinding, like putting in pain together, working out all the time. So when I got there, it's like, oh shit, familiar faces, everything is love. And Danny looked at me and was like, and I'm like, all right, like I, all right, I know what's going on now. I'm chilling. And so you know when what ended up happening in San Antonio was they when they didn't sign me. You know I'm thinking like, well why like. Cause I played well. I had, I had a seventeen point well. game. Like well. I had a, a eight point game in, in ten minutes. Like I'm playing good basketball. Like why didn't they sign me? And my agent came and told me like, yeah, you know, they didn't want to have to pay you. And I'm like, what? So what? what was so I, I worked my you? I worked my whole life to get to this point. And they don't want to pay you. I bust my ass to get to this point, and you tell me it's not about basketball no more. So you know, nobody. No, I, I don't. I've never. I, I don't speak about it because you know, for me, that was the. That was at that point in time, I had never felt that feeling before. Like I was contemplating suicide, like because my entire life I had one goal: play basketball. Like it was, I had one goal. Like it's not just to play basketball; it's, it's to the get to the big NBA. show. Hey, my trainer used now. to tell me all the time: it's only two shows in the world people pay to see: the NBA and the circus. And he said, you don't look like no fucking circus clown. And I'm like, yeah. So, like, I, I get there. And I'm like, nah, nah, nah. I got to keep going because I ain't, I ain't shit yet. I got to keep going. Mm-hmm. And then I play well. So, now it's like, it can't be because I ain't good enough. So, like, what is it about? It's bigger, though. Wow. Yeah. And that was, that was when I think that was, the, that, was the, that was the beginning of my extreme descent for, for, for the love of basketball that I had. 
You just I didn't realize wanna, it ain't about your talent. I don't want to do it no You know, it's about the politics of politics it. And then it's just kind of now, like, you stepping in at this point because, I mean, he was at a different level, yeah. but you've seen that already. We didn't really speak when he was in San Antonio, but we spoke before and after. Well, we had our fight before. And afterwards, we kind of, we got cool again. I mean, at that point, it was just getting back you, on the horse. Now, he said that he wished that you were there. Do you wish that... Man, you know, Obviously, yeah, but always, man, what you know. what 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 could you have said though? What could you have possibly done in that man. aspect to hindsight is always twenty twenty. Man, shout out Cam Newton, it's fifty fifty. Well, <laughs> <laughs> hindsight fifty fifty, Cam it's fifty fifty. <laughs> but hindsight is always twenty twenty, man. If you could go back and say things and do things differently, I mean, granted, you be in the league, he be in the league, I be in the league, you be in the league, you probably be in the league too. I mean, we all was able to go back and change things that we did or we felt like we did wrong. So, I mean, we went through what we went through. For a reason. So yeah. now, so now, you know, you guys have, well, now your professional career. That's, that's, I mean, that I was mean, the, I mean, past the, past I never, the NBA, I never, past yeah, the like for me, overseas basketball was never a thing. Never in the So, cards. you know, like even, even after San Antonio, I never planned on going overseas because I'm like, San Antonio didn't sign me. All right, cool. So before preseason is over, I'm in San Antonio, but I'm cut. And I'm like, why the fuck am I still out here? So it's like two and a half weeks left in preseason. And they don't release that I'm cut until the day mm, before preseason. So now goes. they're screwing you too. So now nobody else can sign me because I done seen people get cut preseason and, and, and just sign with somebody else. Yeah. So I'm thinking like, all right, well, they cut me. I know somebody about to pick me up because they cut me literally right after the Houston game. And, and I killed and, Houston. And you did. And you right there. So you right there in the mix. So yeah. So I'm like, somebody's about to pick me up. I ain't tripping. Some so out I'm, of the barrel team. I'm out there you know in San Antonio for two and a half weeks working out. The craziest part is I'm fucking working out with Dennis Felton. Dennis Felton has a job in San Antonio at the time. So I'm working out with Dennis Felton every day, two a days, gun work, everything, 6 a.m., 2 p.m. I'm lifting. I'm going crazy. Mind you, I'm only doing it when the team's not around because I'm not a part of the team no more. And so I'm like, I'm thinking like, why, why I just don't go home? Like, I could be working out at home. But then I'm like, Shit, I'm enjoy this shit while I'm here, cause you know, shit, I don't never know what might happen. Free training. Yeah, so you know, I'm, I'm still get access ahead. to the facility. Yeah, so I'm still getting my stipends and shit. Like everything is cool, and then you know, they like, all right, well, you know, D League. I'm like, all right, cool. So I go down to D League, and I just I was over basketball at that point in time. I didn't want to work out. I didn't want to do anything, and it showed. So what ended up happening? I'm in San, I'm in Austin at the time, and Man who gets hurt, Kawhi gets hurt, and Steven Jackson gets hurt all at the same time. I'm like, shit, this it. Like, now they got to come get me. Now I was just there. Like, they got to come get me. And I called my agent like, you see this shit? And he was like, yeah, uh, pack your bags. I'm like, all right, bet. So I go pack and get a phone call back 20 minutes later. Hey, you just got traded to Rio Grande Valley. And I'm like, I'm like, why? And he was like, they just signed Justin Anderson. So San Antonio signed Justin Anderson, Anderson. And Rio. Now Rio don't got no wing there. Rio so comes and gets me here. from Austin. So that's how I ended up with Houston's D League team. I knew I wasn't going to get caught up in Houston because Kevin McHale doesn't play rookie. Mm -hmm. So the whole year in the D League, now this is, we had the greatest D League team in the history of the D League. Mm -hmm. Not even close. Who's on your team? Me, Hassan Whiteside, Andrew Gallock, mm -hmm. Malik Waynes, Vernon Macklin. Scott Machado, Royce Jones, uh, uh, Terrence Jones, Royce White, uh, Monte Yunus, mm. Glenn Rice Jr., uh, yeah, DJ right. Kennedy. Well, shout out Glenn Rice. DJ, Peso. DJ Peso. Kennedy. Peso. Like we had, we, we was beating teams by 50 and 60 points. Andrew Gallock, we had, we, uh, we was beating teams by 50 and 60 points. Like every game, they raised our point total. Cause you know, they'd be like, well, if this team scores 100 points, everybody yeah, gets Chick fil A. Yeah. yeah. So they raised our shit with at one point in time is one forty five. If 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 they score one forty five, everybody gets this, and we was going to get that shit every night because they was pre they 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 had a way of playing. Uh, Nick Nurse was our coach. The coach just yeah, saw him on the Yeah. So the the motto down there is ain't no mid range jump shot. It's either three or a layup. That's it. That's perfect for me. Like Drew. What? 
So they, they was giving us in practice. They was giving us in practice. They give us 12 second shot clock. So that's how we got accustomed to playing. Fucked up part is two days down there, I fucked my leg up. But yeah, so you know, I'm in I'm in I'm in I'm in Houston D League situation right now, and I play two three games. You know, play against Jeremy Lamb and you know all the homies I'm getting to see. You know, in a different light. So you know, it's cool down there. And then I get hurt. When I get hurt, Glenn Rice is on the the part of the roster where you know you getting seventy percent of your contract. He's not even on the active roster. So when I get hurt, they activate Glenn Rice. Right. Bro, they just came full circle, bro. Because when we talking, we talking to Glenn, oh God, right? So Glenn, he so. on work Miss Comp. Yeah. And he That's said somebody. He said, he said somebody got hurt on the team on accident. Yeah, because somebody got hurt or somebody. Somebody quit. got on the team on accident, yeah. and then he was like, then somebody ended up getting a call up, and that's how he got even got to play so and Jeff start Allen, the game. Jeff wow. Allen got called up. Wow. So and yeah, you, I'm you gonna tell you how all this shit happened the same weekend. So Jeff that's Allen funny. gets called up. We're in a uh, uh, the blue uh, Oklahoma City's D League team. We're wearing. I think we're Oklahoma City. So we're out there. Glenn's not on the trip. Jeff Allen gets called up the day we get there. So he literally packs his shit and leaves that same night going to Charlotte. So we the first game we play, you always play the back-to-back. First game we play, you know, game goes cool. We end up winning. Second game, that same weekend, I'm playing, go to make a move, and my knee does some same shit it never did before. Same one. This the right one. Okay. It does some shit it never did before. And so I'm like, damn, so I'm out. Cool. We get back to Rio Grande Valley, and they activate Glenn. Now, Glenn's first practice, Glenn is, you know, doing Glenn shit, dunking on niggas, shooting trades. Like, you know, this is what, this is what Glenn does. Yeah. But he's never played in the game before. Glenn's first game starts, 35. <laughs> With the 360 layup. All right, bro, yeah. listen. Because yeah. he Glenn. called him after, after that shit happened. Glenn walks up and you average 29 points. Like, me and Cam actually like. Bro, Glenn, Glenn literally, bro, went from not having shit, not an opportunity, to me getting hurt. He got that opportunity. And he balled the fuck out. So when I came back, it's like you and Glenn running. No, it's like Glenn hooping. Like what the fuck we gonna do with Spoon now? Bro, average twenty nine and eleven. 11. In the finals. 29 yeah, 11. so you can't. So it's like fuck. I can't. Like I want to come back. And I told I told Glenn. I'm like, bro. Like I'm gonna be honest, bro. Like you hooping right now. But I'm hot, bro. But no, you so, no. So this is my point. So. <laughs> This is they're asking me every game like, "Yo, can you play? You want to come back? You want to play?" And I, before I answer them, I'm hitting Glenn like, "What you thinking, bro? Like, how you feeling tonight?" She is I feel good. I'm like, "Nah, I'm still hurting. Fuck it, I'm out." So I sat like two months of the season, just letting Glenn, Glenn work. Like Glenn cook. So whole time the beginning of the playoffs comes, and um, they end up trading. They trade me to Erie. Because early in the year, when we had Gal Lock and we had Vernon Macklin and Whiteside, we ended up trading DJ Kennedy to Erie. So I was a part of that trade to get DJ Kennedy back. Because I told my agent, like, it ain't working. This my nigga, bro. Like, I don't want to come back and shit on him. And I know I'm going to be fine wherever I go. Yeah. You feel me? So I ended up getting shipped to Erie. And then I, that's how I finished up the D League year in Erie. So I leave Erie, and then my first overseas job was a, was a 30-day deal in France. Somebody got hurt. That's how I started my overseas career, $1,200 a month. So I, the 30 days goes by, I get the little 1200 and then I'm playing so well that they tell Buddy, like, just sit tight for just a little bit longer. And so they end up giving me 5000 for the month after. And then after that, you know, shit, Buddy's healthy now. Like, you know, let him have his job back. I'm out. So I come back home and I'm at the home chill. I'm at home chilling. On the way to the bowling alley, I get a call. This is my first big deal. I get a call from my agent. Like, hey, uh, this team in the Philippines just called about you. I gave me a number, they're gonna reach out to you. I'm like, all right, cool. So I talked to the, the president of the team in the Philippines. He's like, hey, you know, are you ready to play? Like right now? Like you in shape right now? And I'm like, Yeah. He's like, all right, cool. You know, we're going to get in contact with your agent. So they send my contract to the agent, my agent, and I leave for the Philippines two days after that. Philippines is where that was where I got my first bag at. Yeah, that's what mm-hmm. talking about, yeah, talking about the Philippines, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the bag, they give it, they give it. Did y'all play for the same team, Air 21? Mm-hmm. I think that's what Glenn played with, too. Zach Grant played for him, too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, um, that, that was, but, you know, by that point in time, in bas- basketball for me was over. 
I didn't. It was because the NBA was the, the only. The only reason I was still doing it was because I didn't want to get a job. Like I didn't want to have to work every day. Fuck well, basketball been my life for twenty eight years. I want to play basketball. Like that's what I want to do. I want you guys to pay me to play basketball. Like why is that so hard? You know, but it got to the point for me where you know shit. I got hurt again, and then once I got hurt the last time overseas, for me, it was just like, I'm going to keep signing deals, but I don't want to practice. I don't want to train. I don't want to work out. Like, y'all going to get what y'all get. Like, I was just going just to go. Just go through the motions, then. Mm-hmm. So, now, so at this point, it's like, all right, man, now I see the writings on the wall. So now it's time to start focusing on another thing. So what was that? Well, some both of you guys, what were the things that you, you know what I'm saying, that you tried to tap into afterwards? I know you guys, older brother is coaching. So, like, I, I think I see you um, doing some coaching. With your older brother actually coached my nephew mm. at Grayson. Mm-hmm. So it's crazy to see that come full circle like that. But what are the, if there is anything that you guys are doing right now, you know, after basketball, coaching, anything that you want to want to talk about? Well, you know, the, the, the biggest thing about any athlete, period, with their respective sport is that if that's what your love is, like if that's what you've been so emotionally invested in for so much of your life, you have to be a part of it Mm -hmm. in some aspect. Like you just got to be around it. So I started training people. Mm -hmm. And training was cool, but it didn't keep my competitive edge going. Like like I'm still a comp. I want to compete. And so coaching for me was able to unlock that where I can still teach these kids the way, but I still get, like, I get excited for game days now. Like, I'm amped up for game days like I'm playing. I done put my guys together. They're you feel me? So shit. now, and, and the dopest part about it is, if I draw a player in a timeout, an ATO, some shit we ain't never ran before, if I'm in my mind, I'm thinking, this shit's going to work, and I draw it up and it works, it's like shit. I just did that. You feel you me? Know, so I, I, I still, still got that. I still get the, I, it, like, it keeps my competitive juices going. And I never, I can... Ten years ago, had you asked me if I'd be a coach, I say hell no, I never want to coach because you know I'm a player, I'm a ball player, I don't be no fucking coach, I play ball. So where you, you know? coaching at, man? I'm at Walnut Grove High School, okay. man. Me and my brother, my oldest brother Will, is the head coach. So, so you still, you yeah, still so get the connected. Yeah, yeah. So it's coming together full circle, not yeah. necessarily on the playing side, yeah, man. but on the coaching side. Yeah. So you guys get to really share that. And bond, you know what I'm saying, and continue really still learning the game of basketball, you know yeah. what I'm saying, amongst yeah. each other. Just so, from a different aspect, man. Yeah, for it's, sure. It's that's like dope. It's, it's, that's, from, it's from a different aspect. That's dope. What about you? What, what you got going when? Man, once I had my son, man, it was just working, man. Daddy I mode, thought about man. coaching, man, but honestly, the opportunities were better for me just to work through. Mm-hmm. And just really, you get that time to spend with your kids, yeah, man. Yeah, I, mean, I, I was one that played overseas and where I had a, a, a young son. And being away from it is is, is really tough. So I, I can definitely understand what you're saying. Like, man, this basketball, all that stuff don't matter. I'm, I get more joy in being a father than, than anything myself. So I definitely commend on you for that. And uh, you know, I can say, I know you're older than me, but proud of you, you know what I'm saying, just from a, a black father standpoint, because you definitely need more of that. So I commend you on that. I know you're not a father yet, but I know you're going to be, I know you're working on it soon, so uh, I know you got a good example of your brothers, both your brothers, not only from a basketball standpoint, but from, a life standpoint as well. So, uh, man, you, got, you really got a, a a good circle of uh, a good community around you, man, and uh, that's that's great to see. Um, really, you know, you guys are like really the original ball brothers before. You guys just didn't have the real crazy dad. Well, you know, social media, media, social media, social media, 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 around, media around, you know social media around. around. This my space here, here, right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that AOL I ain't messenger. No messenger. Yeah. The phone didn't even have him there recording. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. chirping. Yeah. I really so, felt know. like if you guys had that, you know what I'm saying, especially the talent that you guys had and somebody maybe pushing you guys all through you as brothers, you know, you really would have had that that field. Um, or have that that notoriety as, you know, the spoon brother. You guys do, you know, for sure, locally, you guys are for sure household names in the state of Georgia, but, you know, nationally, right, you know, we think all three of you guys would have had those, had those flowers. Um, so as you get that, get ready to wrap this up, man. Um, we also talking about former players and stuff like that. One question we also like to ask is, who was the best player that y'all saw coming out of the state of Georgia? That's a good question, bro. With my own two eyes. With your own, own two, two eyes. eyes. Can I say myself? I'm just asking for the sake of the conversation. <laughs> no, 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 no
I'm being, I, I don't want niggas to think I'm trying to be funny because literally, and this is a literal statement, the best player that I ever saw to play, ever saw play the game of basketball with my own two eyes was him. Until my junior year of college when I got invited to Paul Pierce camp. And I saw Kevin Durant play basketball in person. Like I played him one-on-one. I saw it in person. And that's when my viewpoint changed from him to Kevin Durant. Mm. Okay. So let's, let, let me retract that because we're going to keep it. Georgia. Best player in Georgia. Him. Him. Best player you ever seen in Georgia. Outside of DB, Vincent Banks, Dwight, Lou Williams, Lou Dwight, Williams Chris Allen. Billy, Chris, all of them. Big, you going with Big Bro? He did. That's, he did. He did everything. He did everything. Like, hey he, man, I'm he pretty, was, on the on the basketball floor. He was able. He literally did whatever he wanted to do whenever he wanted to do. Two times state champ. Oh, no, Will got one. I got one. You got one. Okay. So but he mean, was able to. He handled it like a small guard. He mm-hmm. shot it like from from 25, 30 feet easy. You know, and he had a forty. Well, I, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who did follow him. You know, what I'm saying that was, that's going to be watching this show. That's going to think the same thing and, and really believe that. So, I mean, that that's dope that, you know what I'm saying, you've had the impact on your brother and still, you know, many players that we've seen in Georgia and outside of Georgia that he still has that respect you for you. Wrong by so, KD. KD, the only person you know that got that's that's respect. Like, you got to respect that. That's respect. Hey, you got to so respect that. You better say he the best player that you didn't see yeah. coming out of this nah, thing. Well, I, 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 I didn't talking. see it just because of that, though. Yeah, like, yeah. it's uh-huh. literally like if you were able to see the things that he was able to do, the shit was amazing. Like, uh-huh. I'm like, of course, like when he was in high school, I was dumb. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about Chris, when you talk about him, most of Luke's career, Mike, I wasn't around for that. So when Mike dunked on Buddy from Burke, I ain't gonna say his name. I got the call. I didn't get to see that. Mm-hmm. Hey, he dunked on my best friend, bro. <laughs> I got the call. I got the call. Oh, no, 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 not today. Hey, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't get to see nothing. He was a football player, bro. He was football player. So for me, it was like the people that came before me. And the coldest one I seen with my two eyes, Tony Aiden. Tony Aiden. He yeah. literally got, I, I got a triangle too one time where it was two people guarding me. Mm-hmm. And that was the first round of region versus Parkview. And it was the worst thing ever. Had like 12 points. It was so frustrating. Mm-hmm. I had two people guarding me. They had one person guard me on, on their offense. He still followed me around like he on defense. It's your own offense. <laughs> and I saw Tony get trying to two multiple times. Yeah. Where he got two people following him around the whole game. I and Tony I seen him giving those I heard he was just 30. Tony was good. Like three-pointer like this. Steph Curry. Yeah, he's the first Steph. one I seen Sham down and get to a three. <laughs> no, he, Sham, he, did, he did it between his legs. Yeah. He shammed it between the legs into a step back three. And he was left handed. He was left handed. Mm. So, 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 and man, you had the privilege of playing with Tony and I didn't get to Wayne. Play with Tony. Uh, you know, you didn't play with Tony, but the person who you saw. You got no, Will play with Tony. Will play with. No, so Will, Will played and with Tony. Wayne. I played with Wayne. So what about your freshman year is two thousand? And Wayne was Mr. Basketball. Wayne was Mr. Basketball. And you're still Tony was Mr. Basketball too. So was Tony. Yeah. So ooh. Tony was Mr. So Jordan you're like, hey, see, but that's why I said when people start talking about the coldest high school basketball player. Those two have to be in the equation. But I'm gonna yeah. tell you, like they got I ain't saying they got to be in that one discussion, but they in that they in they that in talk. That they gotta be in that talk. No knock to 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 Lou for me, but Tony or Wayne didn't spend much time at the free throw line. And all they buckets came on shot attempts. Yeah, they were good, bro. MTAs. And Lou, he even now he's a master get to the line. He's a, he is, he is. I mean, he's, he's a master scorer. He is a master. Yeah, he's a master scorer. get to the line. I took our uh, coach, man. You know them banners. Y'all need to go and send them over to talk to me. Coach, hey, the uh, honorable mention for me too is Gerald Fitch. Gerald Fitch is cold. He went to Kentucky for y'all. Young people did that. Ah, Gerald Fitch. I watched Gerald Fitch get my brother in the fits. The other brother. Oh, oh yeah, Will, older, Will, 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 Will in the state tournament. In the state tournament. He gave them fits, and I was that. See, that was at the time when you know. I was a kid, so I'm running you like around. Eight, you like seven, eight years yeah, old. Yeah, but I'm, right run, I'm running around the gym going crazy. And every five seconds, it's ooh, ooh. So I'm like, let me go see what's going on. And Buddy was really out there doing that. Man, Quentin Hollis was tough, too. A lot Quentin of people Hollis. Talking about so my Hollis. brother. Yeah, Reedan right there. Look, look, so my right brother, there. my older brother graduated from Reedan. He played there in 99 with Daryl Cooper mm-hmm. and all those type of guys. And Quentin Hollis was a sophomore. 
when he was coming up. So I was like around eight, nine, ten years old when I'm watching Quentin, and he was the highest jumper that I had seen. He's the first time. one I've seen women in the game. Man, mm-hmm. he was the highest jumper that I had seen. Shout out to Quentin Hollis over there. He, I think he's down there in North Carolina coaching the Oceanside, man. So shout out to Quentin Hollis, man. Definitely an OG of mine, man. Yeah. Um, but, man, as we get ready to wrap it up, man, I definitely want to have – thank you want to thank the Spoon Brothers for coming in, man. I know oh. my boy said he was going to pull up on me in a week. He definitely pulled up on me and brought his brother with him, man. So that's it from the 94 Feet Podcast on this episode, man. I'm your boy Cam Tatum. Skinny the Pebble. Man, we appreciate you boys coming. Everybody uh, tuning in, man. Click the links in the bio. Man, we back. we'll be back next 94 week. 94 Feet. 94. 94 Feet. Follow 94 Feet. Click the subscribe Before, button. So obviously I think y'all is going to know who got the best – what hoopers come from the best side of town. North side. Easy. East side. That way. East side. How many? How many? How many? How many? How many, many rookie years? How many we're not talking about. We're not talking about NBA. We're talking about pure, pure, pure hoopers, pure talent. East side. Like, oh, go, okay. Go, yeah, go, yeah. Go, no, go, side. no side. No side. East side. No. Y'all took our coach. Y'all have won with East side coach. <laughs>